Hey, good morning everybody, Cowboy Tim. Trying to keep it down a little bit. I'm out here in the uh, early morning hours. As you can see behind me, that's the Arizona sky right there. Part of it's actually over in New Mexico because we're only one mile into Arizona, the very first rest area. And when it gets daylight, you're gonna love it. Uh, we're on our way to uh, Tucson this morning is our first destination, uh, making our way towards uh, Laughlin, Nevada, of course. And I've been out here drinking coffee. Let me try it. It's so good. This is actually my third or fourth cup that JJ was so kind to make a pot. We're letting uh, Miss Bev sleep this morning, the girls, as he says, um, including the little doggy, uh, Kaylee. And so we've been outside here freezing to death. And very soon, uh, we're going to be hitting the road, and hopefully before daylight even, and get some miles in before we... Uh, have our breakfast just making sure nobody's gonna run over me look at these these plants here uh, we are now entering uh, the area of the country that I love the best with those cowboy cactus and stuff so we're gonna really see some nice rocky uh, mountainous you know terrain not any trees on them like you see in North Carolina and stuff I love the desert mountains and we saw the uh, mountain range yesterday when I was driving of how, and I put a little light on my face, there you go. You can see me. Um, you can tell there's some really high mountains that we're uh, potentially gonna incur uh, as we uh, get over to Tucson, and I think we're gonna go through Phoenix as well, uh, all the way to the quartzite area where we're gonna get off and go straight north uh, up into um, Bullhead City, Arizona. Man, this is good coffee. In fact, that is the best cup of coffee I ever drink in my life. I got that heavy whipping cream in there and he's having to make another pot because I killed it. <laughs> he had some too. But like I say, we've been out here uh, just enjoying the uh, chill. Uh, last night it was really mild when we got here. I couldn't believe it. But this is the kind of weather I really do love the best because you've got chilly evenings and mornings and then it warms up beautifully and sunny. Uh, look at that moon up there. It's like a little crest moon. And it warms up beautifully during the day. But, you know, in Florida, it's always so hot and muggy throughout the entire evening. And you don't get a chance to put on a nice sweater or a light coat or some pants. And we got that here. This is the best 10-day forecast you could possibly order. And so we have uh, big plans. We keep changing them and moderating them. Uh, modifying them, I should say, of what we're going to do and where we're going to go. Uh, the, um, the prices at the uh, Riverside Resort are fair, but a little high. And so there's some other places that we're investigating that we might go. Um, the Quartzsite, Arizona, I think we're going to go by and maybe take a video and just see what, the, what it's all about. But we're not going to stay there. You can let me know in the comments, but... JJ said that uh, it's no longer like a free place. You can't just go out there on BLM land and just squat. And it kind of reminds me when I was uh, much younger and I lived in San Diego, I had a sand rail. And I used to go to Glamis and Ocotillo Wells and those places where people would go <clears throat> with their sand rails and play in the sand. And they're big sand dunes. And I'm talking thousands of people would go, especially Thanksgiving week, because that's really the the kickoff to the desert season ending in Memorial Day, which is really almost too hot to be out there, but that's the last time you can go. Anyway, what did the government do? They seen where thousands and thousands of people were going, having the times of their life, and they said, let's tax it, let's charge them. And so now you have to have a, a permit, a sticker on your vehicle uh, to camp, to go out there uh, if it's so much a year or so much a day or a week. And now you got to pay. And so naturally, people did uh, complain about it, but did they stop going? Heck no. They're not going to stop going. But uh, isn't that terrible? You got to place it. You can't even do any damage to it. Uh, the, the wind reshapes the, the sand literally overnight. There's nothing that's, that you can change or hurt it. Uh, people pick up their trash and, uh, you know, they got to go out there and, and ruin it. So the same thing apparently has happened in Quartzsite where people 
I don't know if it's true or not that you can't just squat out there uh, free of charge on BLM land, Bureau of Land Management. It doesn't matter uh, whether you pay or not. I mean, it's not that expensive, I don't think, to go to the desert and quartzite or the sand dunes. People are going to do it. Hundreds of thousands, I think, show up, you know, after Christmas or Thanksgiving. But uh, we're going to ride by and see what it's all about. I've always heard about it and uh, seen it on YouTube and things. I know a lot of people are out there, other YouTubers and a lot of people. And I'm sure it's really grown too, like Sturgis, you know, to cater to those that have needs for water and dump stations and uh, accessories and repairs and just everything you can imagine in the RV world. Uh, but finally, I want to talk about this beautiful coach again that we were just studying online about all the features and the hot points about this uh, 24-1. There's three, it's called a um, uh, an RUV, uh, R, I don't know what U is, recreational utility vehicle, um, because it's not a, a true class A. And they've been making these for quite a while, and they had another engine in them, I think when they first started. But the 24-1, which is 25 feet, eight inches on the outside, 24-1 means it's the model number. And then I think they have a 26-2 and a 26-8. There's three of them. And those are more expensive. And this one is the one that's actually, um, I like something like a fly was on me. It's kind of like their bread and butter. So we were reading the features and it's quite impressive. I mean, we know about a lot of it, but we've been you know, enjoying it and uh, looking it over. But we also read some things this morning that we didn't know that make it even better. And this guy, JJ, has absolutely stepped in crap and came out smelling like a rose. He was out looking at RVs, every shape and size, class A's, big class, uh, big, big class A's, uh, class C's and the like, and ended up getting this one a pilot owned it and he got it over in um, the east coast of florida down south of where he lives from the villages and uh, i think that the, it was at a dealer uh, that the guy had it there i think on consignment the dealer didn't own it they were selling it for him either way it was at a dealer and uh, he struck a deal and he's a good negotiator he got a great deal he's more than happy with what he paid for it and i think the sticker price on a 25 is 170 thousand dollars and I'll let JJ disclose if he ever wants to what he paid but it wasn't anywhere close to that and it's just as good as any uh, new one believe me it, it's only had 8,000 miles on it the TV still had the wrapping on it I had to upload and update all the updates on it and the apps it's never been turned on so when people say about buying used, buying somebody else's problems what happens with these here folks is people buy them they use them once or twice and they say, you know what, that wasn't for me. Uh, people bought it during the, um, you know, the pandemic and a lot of people bought RVs and now they've since decided, you know, they don't want an RV anymore. Or, you know, whatever the reason, gas costs, you never know. Maybe they got involved with something else that they uh, like, to, uh, like to do. So he's got it now and he loves it. And that 7.3 Godzilla motor he's got, that six speed transmission, he was getting 12 miles per gallon uh, at 65 miles an hour, which is phenomenal. I'm still sitting on nine. I don't get it. I got a 10 speed transmission with only a 6.8 liter. But, you know, different gearing and I'm pulling a big camper. I'm about 14,000 pounds uh, total weight with everything I've got. So it is what it is. But I love my setup too. But there's something to be said if you're interested in an RV. To be able to just walk inside, get behind the wheel, and drive away. And you got one little slide you can pull in, it only comes out about a foot. It makes a huge difference, too. Uh, different floor plans, different strokes for different folks. I love what I have, but that I could see myself enjoying that. I could see myself, you know, I'm adaptable. I could, I could live in it. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to switch from what I have to that. But if I bought that, I could adapt to that. It's got a lot of storage and everything. So anyway, um, what else is going on today? I'm going to get out of this cold weather. My hands are about freezing to death. Uh, we've got this guy right here going to go by and creep by real slowly. Uh, he knows I'm out here videoing. How you doing? 
Have a good trip. You got some big motor on the back of that truck. Looks like he's weighed down pretty good. Uh, the trucker that's next to me, you want to walk over and see where I'm at? I'll take you over and show you. We got him in here at the very end of the um, rest area. <clears throat> he just took up a couple spots there. This place never even filled up last night uh, with the passenger cars. <clears throat> so I'm right here. Uh, this guy just came in this morning, this bobtail. Um, that's not even a spot. He just kind of slows in there, barely in there. And then this guy stayed all night uh, carrying these pods, and I'm right next to him. Let me show you. Still got a nice shiny look to it from uh, the wash job I gave her um, with the gain laundry soap. Uh, the front of it, of course, has got some bugs and things, and the truck is uh, needing a bath too. But there it is in all her glory with the uh, Super Crusher. Two doors, it's an amazing little camper. I put the slides out last night, check this out. There's the two slides, put them out like a foot. That's all I had to do. Just so I could squeeze through the uh, living room uh, to the, um, I gotta switch hands. Things getting heavy. That iPhone's heavy. Um, I just needed to get through the living room, uh, through the bathroom. I could have went right into the uh, bedroom door right here and crawled into the bed. I didn't even need to put the slides out. I could have slept a little bit diagonally. I have a, a, a queen in there and I could, uh, I could sleep fine. But I pushed it out about a foot, foot and a half, just so I could get to my dresser uh, drawers and uh, get some uh, clean socks and underwear and all that this morning. We filled up water yesterday at the Loves right before we got here. I've never carried so much water. And I took a great shower this morning and I heated up the, um, uh, the water heater with the furnace with the propane and I use that water miser. I've got a little dial, a little lever. I literally turn that and the water sucks up from the water pump through the water heater and back into the water tank until it's hot so that when I turn the water on the shower to take a shower, I don't have to waste a pint, a gallon or any water until it gets hot. It's a water miser, it's a, a great feature. And as soon as I turned it on, it was scalding hot. I had to get that cold mixed in there with it. And I took a nice shower. And right out there in the parking space, you know? And everything's in the holding tanks. It's really great, the RV life, of how they build these things and you can be fully self-contained. You got a home with you. People buy SUVs and trucks and campers and they, do, they got a car, they pack a suitcase and they go to a hotel and well, that's great, you know, if you can afford it and stuff, but you can't cook in there per se, and it's not your home, like, you know, it's not your bed. There's a lot, a lot to say about having an RV, but you gotta use them. You know, these people that buy them and go out once or twice and park it next to their house, and there it sits for months and months and months. It's like a boat, you know, you can't do that. It's gonna, it's the worst thing you can do for them. And so I'm yanking mine around. I got some miles on her and I'm gonna keep doing it as long as I can. All right, anyway, folks, that's gonna be about the end of the video. We're gonna get ready to get on down the road. It's getting daylight now. Let's take a look at that sky one more time and uh, we'll get some miles in and then get on down the road and make some breakfast. Oh, I see some calm trails. Another day of traveling, another day of crushing it. <laughs>